Apple just launched a brand new web-based version of their app store. So previously, these were just native apps on iOS and Mac, but now you can visit them in a web browser, including Firefox, and uh, navigate and see all of the apps that they have available. And it's built with Svelte, which is good news for the Svelte crowd. But when they released their website, they also included source maps. And source maps actually allow you to see the original source code. Now, of course, this is just front-end source code, but I have seen some things. I've seen things that Apple probably does not want you to see based on these source maps, which they have since removed. So in this video, we're gonna dive into all of the things that I found, as well as talk about like, should you publish source maps? Because in this Reddit thread, there are all kinds of people that are attempting to dunk on juniors or front-end devs that don't know anything, saying that exposing, exposing your source maps is an okay thing to do. But I'm here to show you that in instances like this, it is not because it's actually revealed a lot of internal things about Apple that they probably didn't want you to know. So in this video, we're gonna dive into that. And I'd love to hear from you as well in the comments. Do you release source maps when you publish your application? Uh, because as I'm gonna show, maybe you shouldn't. But anyways, welcome to Syntax. We have all kinds of videos we publish regularly. We have tasty treats for web developers, um, including other videos where we dive into how websites were built. And uh, we have a podcast that's published twice a week and a newsletter you can subscribe to to keep you up to date on all the latest tech and also some interesting things that we find around the web. If that sounds good, just subscribe. <laughs> and uh, welcome to Syntax, my name is CJ. Let's dive in. Okay, first I wanna show you what a source map is and what it gives you. So here I have a Svelte and Vite application and source maps are not enabled. So this is a fully built application. This is something like you would deploy to a static server. If we open up the DevTools, click on debugger, we can see under assets, there's just a single JavaScript file. And this is a minified and bundled JavaScript file. So even though we're using Svelte, all of that is in a single JavaScript file. And in the uh, debugger here, I can actually format it and see all of the codes. And um, somewhere in there is uh, this code here that actually has a button that we can click on. Um, I believe it's getting rendered like right here, but you can see that this is not straightforward to look at, right? This is not code that I wrote. This is code that got generated by the build. Now in this instance, source maps are not enabled and that's why we're only seeing a single JavaScript file because if we take a look at the network tab, when I load this web page, it's just gonna load the HTML, JavaScript, CSS, and then some SVGs. That's the only stuff that it needs to load and that's all is required to make this counter work, okay. Now let's enable source maps. And so in a Vite application to enable source maps, in the build section, you can set source map to inline and then we'll run a build. So we'll do PNPM build. You'll actually see in the output that the map itself is 300 kilobytes. So that's all of my comments. That's actually the actual spelt source code. It's including all of that in the map. So when we look at it in the debugger, we're gonna see the original source code and not just the minified source code. So now if I refresh the page, open up the dev tools, you'll see it's more than just a single JavaScript file. And because these are inline source maps, you'll notice even if we look at the network tab, there's nothing extra being sent across the network because those source maps are embedded in that JavaScript file. So now on the debugger tab, we can see all of our node modules and dependencies like Svelte, and we can see our source directory. So if we click on this, this is the actual Svelte component for the app component. And then if we go into lib, this is the actual Svelte component for that counter component. And we're seeing the original source code, right? We're not seeing the minified version. And so this is what source maps give you. And they're really great for debugging, but they also could include certain secret information. And that's what I want to show you. So in this counter component, I left a comment behind that says, to do, the query param is not publicly known. Don't let people use this until we are ready. <laughs> and you'll notice that if I include a query param, it's going to set the initial value of count. So basically if I do initial equals 42, now when the page loads, the button starts at 42. Now, again, this is this is a client-side vulnerability, but this could be talking to some back-end service. And also you could have other things in the comments here. Um, and when you include source maps, all of your comments, all of your original source code is included as well. So this is what source maps are, and they are very useful, but as I've shown here, comments get included. And it's a lot easier to see what the original code was, right? Looking at this, I can see, okay, read in the params from the search get that initial value, parse it, make sure it's not NAN, set it on initial state. This is code that me as someone that understands Svelte can read and understand. If we look at the minified version, you have to do a lot of extra work to actually figure out what's going on there. Um, and so let's, let's redo this with the minified version where there are no source maps. And I'll point out by removing the source maps, that file is now only 26 kilobytes. So it removed all that extra information. It's just the code that's needed to actually run the site. 
Now, if we take a look, we have this single JavaScript file. Now, like I mentioned, you, this is minified. You could still try to understand it. Maybe you could throw it at an AI to figure out what this code is doing. Um, but it's going to take a lot more time for an attacker, from, for a person that does not have good intentions with your website, to figure out what's going on. Um, so we could search, because I know the vulnerability here, I could search for like URL search params. Yeah, and even this, I mean, you know, you could kind of understand what this is doing. Get, get the param and then set it on the number here. But this is minified. And in the security world, this is known as security through obscurity. So this is obfuscation. The reason we do this in the world of web is this is a lot smaller to send across the wire. So by sending a variable with a single letter, as its name instead of the full variable name like initial value you're actually saving bytes that get sent across uh, the network and in turn um, your site's going to load a lot faster so this is why we do this but these days with sites that we're building that are getting larger and larger and sometimes including business logic on the front end this minification is sometimes a good thing because it makes it a bit harder for people to figure out what's actually going on now i'm not here to argue that uh obfuscation is security because it's not, it's like one level of security, but again, a savvy attacker could could figure out what this code is actually doing and, and try to find some hidden features or hidden vulnerabilities. So that's what source maps are. That's what they could make available. And honestly, at the end of the day, one of the biggest reasons to not enable them probably is embarrassment, right? <laughs> you don't want people seeing your variable names or your folder structure or your uh, comments. Those are things best kept secret and internal. So that's what source maps are. Now let's take a look at the Apple source code. So this is the code as was made available by the source maps. I'm not gonna make this code public and I'm not gonna point to where you can find it because Apple has since removed those source maps. So they don't want you to see this stuff. Um, first of all, we can see some dependencies in the node modules folder. And if we look into the source directory and for instance, look in components, every single component for the app is available here, including things like the star rating system or the video player. And again, I'm not showing you all of the source code because Apple doesn't want you to see this stuff, but all of that is available via the source maps, including the main app.svelte entry point, including lots of comments that um, might have some internal info as well. Now on that note, some of the main things I found in here that Apple probably doesn't want you to see are in the comments, which can be easily stripped out but a lot of these comments revealed information about internal architecture and internal structure and internal flow. And all of those things could be used by an attacker to figure out how Apple works internally. And so if they somehow get access, then they have a better idea of what they're looking at once they get internal access. And one of the first things I found were links to internal GitHub enterprise repositories. So all of these links will not work on the public internet and I'm blurring them so that you can't see them, <laughs> um, but, if you're on the Apple intranet, these would resolve. And I guess if you have app access to the Apple's GitHub uh, enterprise account or whatever else. And so this tells me about several different internal applications. So there's like a metrics application. There's the actual source code for the iOS app store. All of these are linked in the comments for good reason, right? Because this web app is a lot of times a port or maybe referencing some native code elsewhere. And so linking these github repos as an attacker tells me more about what repos exist and maybe if i get internal access i know what to look for or what to try and get access to so github links are one thing that i found in the comments of the source maps the next thing i found were radar links and initially i did not know what this was but i found this article from matt the ns hipster about Apple's bug reporting. And if you're in the world of iOS, you probably have come across this before, but Radar is their internal bug tracking tool. They also make some of it publicly available so you can submit like public bug reports. But I'm guessing that a lot of these IDs are internal Radar IDs. And this points to bugs. It points to features that aren't implemented yet. And as an attacker, I could go through all of these and i don't have access to radar so i can't see the full descriptions but they do have so a short description next to each one so with each one of these radar comments i could start to figure out what are the parts of the code base that maybe aren't as logically sound or maybe have a bug in them and then try to exploit them on the main website now another thing i found is they're actually using sentry which is fun because everything on syntax is brought to you by sentry so they have this internal module called error kit and it actually wraps Sentry to send errors off to Sentry. And if you're not familiar with Sentry, it is an error reporting platform. So if you're running apps in production, like Apple is, you wanna see what's going wrong. 
All of those errors that happen while your app is running in production get reported back to the Sentry dashboard. We'll also have tracing and profiling. Uh, you can see which pages are slow or which database queries are slow. You can see what a user was doing when an error happened with replay, as well as a ton of other insights into apps running in production. So Apple trusts Sentry. Don't quote me on that because I don't know if it's public yet, so you should too. Uh, but it's great. Check out Sentry. Everything we do here at Syntax is brought to you by Sentry. We love Sentry. And Apple apparently loves Sentry too. Now, another thing I found about their internal architecture is the particular API gateway that they use. Now, as an attacker, you could use that information to maybe find vulnerabilities uh, in that API gateway, or you now have more information to be able to poke and prod at their systems. Now, the last thing I found that they definitely did not want to be available to the world are the things inside of node modules and the things inside of shared. And these are essentially internal libraries that are used on multiple Apple websites for utilities like working with objects or arrays or working with the network or uh, working with certain UI components. They basically have things in here that are used all across Apple. And typically, those pieces are tree shaken and broken apart and embedded and bundled with the rest of their app. But because they included the source maps, all of the source code for those libraries are in this folder here. And again, I don't want to reveal any names of the packages, but these are not available on NPM. These are private packages that they host internally. And one of them appears to be a TypeScript port of the native iOS app store. And that's probably how they got a lot of this functionality in here. And that's one of the things that also links out to specific Git repos in the comments referencing certain implementations. Um, like I mentioned, there's also utilities for like working with arrays and objects. And as an attacker, you might actually try to analyze that library and figure out maybe there's a cross-site scripting vulnerability somewhere in there. And if you know that that package is used across multiple web properties owned by Apple, you could try to start and exploit it as well. So there's definitely some stuff in here that they did not want you to see, and it would have been much better to be obfuscated and also tree shaken and missing. <laughs> so that people could not have prying eyes on this stuff. Now, with all of that said, I want to highlight some of the comments from this Reddit thread, because again, I think people are overgeneralizing. So this top comment, I've had this argument so many times with inexperienced front-end developers. This is not exposing their source code. While yes, it may not be minified and it's slightly more human readable, it's not exposing any additional logic. Remember, obfuscation is not security. Talked about this at the beginning. It's a form of security, but it's not ultimate security. But the one thing we noticed in this analysis is it actually did expose some internal libraries. So even though you may think that source maps are only including the, the code required for the website, even code that isn't linked and would typically be tree shaken is included in those source maps as well. So you can't just say that source code is not exposed because clearly more code is exposed here than would have been if the source maps were disabled. Now, another comment here is it's easier to debug production issues if you have source maps enabled. Well, you don't have to enable them for everyone. You can actually lock the source map URLs to specific internal IP addresses, so that way they're only accessible internally. Or you could use a tool like Sentry. So when you push a new build with Sentry, you can actually upload your source maps. And that way, the app that's running in production, those source, source maps aren't available. But if an error occurs, you're actually going to see the source map in your Sentry dashboard. So there are ways around this to not make your source maps available to the entire world. And this comment, front end code, not really that big a deal. Not all of its source code. Like I showed, there's some stuff in here that they do not want you to see. Uh, this also highlights some fun aspects of this. And so for learning purposes, going through their code base, seeing that real developers have to do statements and fix me statements, because those were sprinkled throughout the code base as well. And so if anything, it is a little bit embarrassing to have those comments exposed to the world like this. But again, if you just disabled source maps, then those wouldn't get leaked to the world. Uh, to this user, nothing special, wouldn't even mention it in a conversation. Well, my friends, I thought it was worth an entire video. So I think it's worth more than a conversation. <laughs> so just stop releasing your source. Like I th th my main issue with this Reddit thread is so many people are downplaying, oh, just release your source maps when very clearly some internal information can be leaked if you leave your source maps on. Bro thinks they found a gold mine here. I, I don't know, man. I don't I, I think maybe we did. <laughs> yeah, I would completely agree that obfuscation is not security, but there are other aspects of including source maps that you are not considering. It's like saying I hacked NASA for taking a picture at the front of its building. Sure, I would not say that this is a hack because while those source maps were available, anybody that went to the website and opened the dev tools could get access to the original source code. So it's not a big deal that someone downloaded all of this, this source code. It's just a big deal that they accidentally left those source maps on. And I say accidentally because now when you visit their website, 
and you go to the debugger, that stuff is no longer available. You only see the minified code. You don't see all of the Svelte components and everything else. So even Apple agrees that they do not want you to see <laughs> those source maps. So they shipped front end code to the front end. Yeah, I think uh, the issue with Reddit is a bunch of people just start piling on, acting like they know what they're talking about when they actually haven't even looked into it. So yeah, the majority of these Reddit users have no idea what they're talking about. <laughs>